Hey everyone, welcome to our Friday demo. Thanks for joining me. I hope you had a wonderful week and uh, hopefully we'll end it with a fun painting. Tonight, we're gonna try something uh, a little different. I've done them before. It's similar to what I did in my last YouTube video. Uh, we're gonna do a, a flip and drag uh, and hopefully get a lot of cool negative space. So uh, welcome, uh, everyone's here already. Thanks for stopping by. We got Donna and Novala are in the house. Hey, Susan, Carla and Pat are here. Uh, Su um, Susan LC is here, Kim is here. Woof, we got a whole bunch of people here. So thanks for joining me. I think this is gonna be kind of a fun, fun demo. I mixed up some interesting colors. Um, I'm kind of keeping it in my uh, rather neutralized color theme, but uh, I've got some kind of interesting, fun colors. I think we'll be a, make a cool uh, flip and drag painting. And uh, so what is a flip and drag really? Um, well, the way I like to do it, um, when I do a flip and drag, you're, it's basically a flip cup and then you drag it around your canvas. It's a little bit kind of uh, in between a, f a regular old flip cup and a floating cup. Um, but I like to incorporate negative space into this particular type of pour. It really lends itself uh, to like negative space. Um, so I like to design, you know, paintings around negative space rather than kind of letting it happen accidentally. Um, I know everyone freaks out when I pour off all the negative space in a lot of my paintings um, because I'm not really thinking about it uh, in most of the techniques. But techniques like this one that we're going to do, uh, I think about negative space ahead of time and you can kind of plan for it a little bit better. Um, you can come up with a cool negative space color. Uh, so the whole painting's kind of designed around negative space. So, um, and uh, we'll talk about more about that as we get into it. So, uh, but if you have any uh, questions uh, along the way, throw them in the comments, I'll be happy to answer them. And uh, hopefully um, people can stay awake I was putting people to sleep apparently in the last live demo. So sorry about that. I'll try to keep them a little more lively this time. So um, Carla's got a question right off the bat. And do we use less paint in the cup? Absolutely, 100% yes, Carla. Uh, I'll talk about that when we uh, start layering our cup. Um, but uh, yes, uh, the way you can kind of, another way you can incorporate negative space in is using less paint in your layered cup. So. Um, that's a great question and we'll talk about that for sure. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to, uh, um, I'm going to flip the camera and we'll take a look at the colors we're going to be using. I'm going to be working on a, before I do that, uh, 14 by 16 or 14 by 18, uh, panel. So this is one of my, uh, uh, custom panels. H hopefully I'm planning on like a nice finished painting that I will be able to keep. You never know. I pour over some of my paintings on panels that don't work out, but uh, hopefully we'll get a good one. Always go into it thinking it's going to be a keeper. So positive mindset. All right, let's flip the camera and we'll take a look at the colors. So here we go. We got my panel. Uh, I'll just put this up there for now. And um, first of all, let's talk about our negative space color. This is a, it's a very light kind of lilac color, like a lavender. Uh, I mixed up, it's mostly white with a little bit of silver in it and a little bit of, uh, what is it? A purple gray from Liquitex. Um, it's this uh, color right here. I love this this particular purple. So there's a uh, just a very smallest amount of purple gray in here. Um, and then some silver and then uh, mostly white though. So it's kind of this very... Um, very subtle, kind of warm, uh, like a warm purple color. That's going to be our, I'm going to flood that over our canvas, but that's our uh, base coat and that's going to be our negative space color. Next up, I've got a dark, um, what, our dark color. I always like to have a dark value usually. This is black and copper and it creates this very uh, warm, really dark, um, I guess we call that a really dark, it's like a, almost like a maroon color but it's a, a warm black color. I really like it. So that is just black and copper together. Um, I've got uh, gold and a little bit of bronze in this one and a touch of this again. So 
I've kind of used this this paint in most of the colors, like to one, like uh, a, just a tiniest bit in some of them, a little more in others, but uh, there's a little bit of this in most of them. So that's kind of a unified color palette. So this is gold and bronze. I just use Artist Loft Gold and I think uh, Liquitex Bronze. And to make this kind of a warm, um, it's like a warm gold, kind of not quite as deep as copper, but uh, kind of a nice color. And then a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the purple gray. So we got that one. And then we've got uh, kind of a blue. This is a kind of a neutralized blue. I've got one of my favorite uh, blue gray colors. So I use some blue gray. Again, a little silver in this one and a touch of just a tiny, tiny about amount of the purple gray is in this one. And then finally, I've got a white and this is metallic white um, with just a touch of the Amsterdam pewter in it. So looks pretty much white. It is pretty much white, but it's kind of a warmish, uh, just a, a warmish white, like an off white. So um, those are the colors. So I've got four colors, plus I'll probably incorporate some of our base coat color also in our uh, layered cup. So kind of to unify the whole thing. So let's start and layer our cup first. And so for a 14 by 18, normally I would use, let me scooch this over here a second. Um, sorry, I just saw the camera. So there we go. So for a 14 by 18, normally I would use 10 ounces of paint in a regular flip cup. But since we want negative space, and just like Carla mentioned, I'm gonna use less paint in our uh, layered cup. So in here, this is a seven ounce cup. I'm only gonna put five ounces in. So I'm gonna half, it's half the amount that I normally would use for a flip cup. So that is the amount of paint I'm gonna put in. And uh, I'm probably gonna just add it rather randomly. I'm not gonna think too much about layering the cup, but um, I'm gonna put a little white in first. And again, kind of like, ring pours and straight pours. Kind of the first colors you put in are usually th some of the last colors to come out. So you can kind of think about that a little bit. I'm kind of pouring from both sides of my cup. Um, it kind of, kind of will e even out the layers a little bit more perhaps. I've been doing that more often with my flip cups, just kind of getting a little more creative about layering the paints. You can turn the cup and layer from different sides. So I'm not doing everything from the same side, kind of turning it around, making it more random. And you could also do high pours if you wanted to. I'm not going to do any high pours in this one. I just don't want, I don't want the paints to blend too much uh, when we do our flip and drag. So, and here we go. I'm just turning the cup layering from multiple angles and sides. Um, you could even do like a drizzle pour. I've done drizzle pours or drizzle layers, I'm sorry, drizzle layers before, something like that. That's kind of fun. Do another like drizzle layer. It's similar to the high pour, but you're not pouring from really high up. There's another little drizzle layer. Some more white. So do a drizzle layer of the white and maybe a tiny bit of the dark and we'll be ready to go. There we go, that's our five ounces. And uh, I've got that all layered up in a crazy way. So I'm gonna move that aside. And normally I wouldn't let stuff like this bother me, the drip, but I'm gonna wipe it off on this one just because we're gonna be working with a solid color and that will kind of, you know, muddy things up a tiny bit over there. Um, there we go. So I'm going to move these over out of the way. And I'm going to uh, uh, flood my canvas. I'm going to check for questions really quick. And uh, Susan's got a question. Uh, is the paint a bit thicker? Um, no, this is normally, this is my normal consistency, kind of that slight mound. Uh, when the paint streams off the stir stick. Pretty much the same consistency I normally use with flip cups and ring pours. Um, it could be a tiny bit thick, uh, thinner if you wanted to. It could be a tiny bit thicker. Um, 
uh, for this type of technique and you know and flip cups in general, consistency isn't as critical as some other techniques. But um, it's still it's you know kind of my normal my regular old consistency. Good question. All right, so let's do it. I'm going to uh, just pour on some paint and kind of go through my tilting process to tilt uh, the paint around. That looks like probably way too much, but uh, we'll see. I might need more. So there's many ways you can kind of flood a canvas. Um, this is one way that I like. You just kind of the regular old way I normally tilt. I might need a little bit more paint. Um, I didn't. I didn't measure this or, uh, you know, I've just, there was about eight ounces in this cup and I used a little bit, but um, normally you need a little less uh, paint when you're flooding your canvas. It's not like a flip cup, you know, or a ring pour. Um, we can stretch the paint out more with when we're flooding it just because it's all one color, a solid color. And I don't want a, a really, really thick layer on there. Just a, just a thinner, a thinnish layer um, just to cover the canvas or panel in this case. So I'm just gonna let the paint do its thing, roll on down there. And you can check the, the sides at this stage. And then I'll turn it. This it takes more paint to do this than what I normally do with a you know, spreading it out with a you know painting knife or a palette knife. Um, just to get the paint to cover it by itself, um, just takes more paint, and you've got a little waste, you know, because it's you're pouring some off. But you do get a beautiful surface to do your flip and drag on, and uh, and it does look cool. So. Um, I don't do this all the time, but for this technique, I like to do it. It's fun. You're starting with like this really uniform, uh, smooth, um, you know, kind of pretty canvas that's got this cool color on it. So it can be fun to work with a, like a flooded canvas. Almost there. There we go. And if you missed any edges, uh, you can always touch those up. I missed a, a, you know, a few right here. I just pick up some paint with my hands and you can just kind of bring it up the side and uh, touch up your edges really easily. And over here, it's looking pretty good. I've got it, so we're ready to go. So let me center this again and then I gotta wipe my hands off quick. And uh, Navala's got a question. And uh, she's asking about the base coat color. And it's a, it's a custom mixture. It's mostly white. And there's a little bit of silver in there. There's some silver and a little bit of this purple gray color. So it's kind of a custom mix. Um, so it's, I'd say 80%, 80 or eight, maybe 85% white, 10% um, silver, and maybe just a, you know, 1% purple gray, just the tiniest drop. Um, I actually put a tiny bit on my stir stick of the purple gray and then mixed it in because it can be, you know, really potent. So, but if you play around with it, um, you, you can recreate that color. So it's kind of a lavender color, like uh, Judy mentioned there. So I think it'll be a fun one. All right, let me get rid of this uh, banner thing here so you can see everything a little bit better. All right, so I've got, and oh, Monique, Monique has mentioned my mic. Hopefully I'll try to fix it. Hopefully it's better. Um, hopefully I don't have mic problems. 
So let me know if you're having any other uh, audio issues. I'll see what I can do. All right, so I've got my base coat on. We're going for negative space. I've got my layered cup right here. And uh, next up, what we have to do is get it on our canvas. I'm gonna do it the safe way. And I forgot to grab this earlier, but I got my little uh, flipper here. So I'm gonna just use my flipper to put my cup on. And by the way, this is, I do have a, a tab in my cup. I'll talk about that in a second, but I'm gonna turn it over on my little chopper. And now I gotta decide where I wanna put my cup. And this is kind of a, a important decision because um, our paint's gonna you know, gradually flow out of our cup this time, not one big puddle, but I wanna make an interesting design over our, our canvas. So I don't wanna put it right in the middle. That's kind of a boring. I'm gonna put it somewhere in maybe one of these thirds. I think maybe down here. I'll put it right here, just like that. I'll let it sit there for a second. So just like the floating cup, I put a little hole in the side of my cup right there and, and put a tape tab on it. Um, because if you try to do a floating cup without you know, releasing the air, uh, the second you kind of lift your cup, it all comes out. And we don't want that. We want it to come out kind of more slowly and gradually. So that's why I like to put a little hole in there and my little tape tab, my patented tape tab. And uh, now we're gonna just release the paint slowly and uh, move the cup around the canvas in an interesting way. So let's try it. So here we go, I got my tab off and then slowly I'm going to like lift up, let the, let the uh, cup rise up a little bit. I don't wanna go all the way off the edge. I wanna kind of conserve my paint. And it's similar to the floating cup. It's just kind of floating out of there. I'm just moving it around in kind of an interesting way. And then we're gonna be doing a lot of tilting. So that's looking cool. And then I'll probably end it maybe over here. And all the paint's out at this point. There we go. So we got like this big old blob, but it doesn't look great right now. But that's okay, that's what we were expecting. But we do have some interesting cool lines in here, which I like. Um, that's kind of the point. We wanna get some interest in our paint puddle before we start stretching and, and tilting. So we could, you could even go back and uh, do a little bit of um, um, augmentation if you wanted to. I don't wanna do any, any flip, like lip drags through here. You could for sure. Like I like, I kind of like circles like that. Um, where you kind of put in, kind of let the cup put in a circular, a little circular line. It can be very interesting. I maybe I'll do that once or twice up here. There's a good chance that, that might get tilted off, but perhaps not. Maybe I'll do it one more time. Um, no, I don't want to mess with that. So um, I kind of want to keep it natural without too much of me screwing around with it. So next comes our tilting. And number one uh, thing to keep in mind is we wanna keep negative space. So that's you know in the, in the front of my mind, I wanna keep some cool negative space happening, but we need to create more interesting shapes with our paint puddle. So there's no real right or wrong way to tilt. There's not really a process. You just kinda have to start and then uh, things kind of uh, will, you know, present themselves on what to do next. So let's start by tilting up this way um, and get some paint off of this corner. So here we go. And uh, actually, I'm going to turn it towards me. I find that so much easier. And don't be afraid to, to turn your painting always. So I'm kind of going back and forth. We're gonna lose some of that, uh, those marks I made, but that's fine with me. And this is the one time where I think you can tilt more aggressively and uh, really get the paint moving 
quicker because it creates more, uh, it makes the paint move and shift more, can create some interesting lines and compositional things. So this is one of the few techniques that I, it's like, you know, normally I say take your time and go slow. This is one of the times you can kind of go fast um, and really see what you can make happen. So I kind of like that. So I'm really letting the paint slide around fast. And I'm getting awfully close to losing a lot of negative space. So I don't want that. So I'm going to bring it back down here. Okay. Come towards me. And you never quite know how this is going to work out because every time it's different. Um, But, uh, so it's okay. Um, I'm going to just think about it for a minute. You can always put it down and think about it. Um, right here, I, I, I wanted to keep something in this corner, but it's, there's such a tiny little corner there. I'm going to tilt this off um, just because it's going to be distracting to me. If I can get the paint to move. A little quicker down there. There we go. All right, so let's take a look. And you could always kind of pick a corner to like be a sacrificial corner. And then if you need to pour more stuff off, more paint off, you could use that corner to get more paint off of there. Um, that's kind of what I did a little bit there. I'm, I quite like it right now. So let me turn it. And let's see, I'm gonna wipe my hands off and just take a look. We've got some cool cells and some cool lacing in there, which I like. It's kind of subtle. Um, I really like the colors a lot. I think the base coat is very pretty and it flows right into the rest of the colors like that a lot. Um, I think I might be done tilting just looking at it, but I'm going to study it a second. You can always study it and then tilt a little more if you need to. But we got this interesting line up here. That's because of the paint move very fast and create like kind of a big drip. I really like that a lot. That breaks up this corner very well. I think that's awesome. Um, I really like this big curve right here uh, with the negative paint. And um, that's very like a pretty compositional curve. Um, and then we kind of come down here and get this really interesting uh, line and, and shape down here, which I really like. So what I'm thinking is I don't want to tilt too much more because we're going to start losing our base coat, our negative space. And this is kind of all about negative space. But there's just enough, in my opinion, of negative space shapes um, and then the positive space. And there's a lot of stuff I really like in the positive space. This dark shape in the middle is very cool. We got cells and some lacing. It's got this big um, kind of soft area right here. So I think I'm going to call this one done. I might pour off just the tiniest bit from this corner. There's just this little thing right there. But uh, if I do that, that might be all we need to do. There we go. So my first thought is um, I, sh I could have used less paint for sure and we would have had more negative space. So if, if you want to keep more negative space, this was half of the amount of my flip cup um, 
you know, my normally for a flip cup this size, I use 10 ounces. Uh, I used five ounces of paint, but you could even cut that down. Maybe use even three ounces would give you much more negative space and you'd still get a very interesting, you know, interesting design covering your painting. So you can play around with the, there's no hard and fast rule for, you know, the amount of paint you need for a painting like this or a technique like this. You can play around with it. My rule of thumb is to go like half, usually half of my flip cup amount, or you could go half of the ring pour amount. Um, that would be good too. That'd be about four ounces, I think. So I, I quite like it a lot. I'm going to turn it around. Um, I've been looking at things from different angles a lot lately to see if I like things at different in different orientations. Kind of like that. Let's turn it again. So, um, by the way, this is just my regular old easy formula. Uh, so there's just two parts flow trial, one part paint in all my paints, nothing weird or fancy, just flow trial and paint and then some water um, in all my colors. So that isn't as great. I'll turn it this way. That's kind of an interesting composition. So I'll turn it back. We'll see. So, I like that one too. I like that orientation too. Maybe that one or one of those vertical ones be kind of cool. So, but that's pretty much it. That's a, it's a pretty quick, pretty quick process. Um, but it's similar to the, a flip cup. It's kind of a fancy flip cup. But uh, I'm going to check and see if you got any questions. Um, let me flip back here. So, whew, that was fun. These can be a little nerve wracking. Like uh, normally, when I you know do pours and stuff, um, you know the expectations or things I want to accomplish are are very small. There's not many. Uh, just an interesting painting, but stuff like this where you really want to keep negative space, preserve stuff, um, can be a little more nerve wracking than some other some other pours. But uh, I think it turned out pretty good. So I'm going to check and see if there's any uh, any questions, any other questions. All right. Just scrolling back up here. Thanks for all the um, great comments, by the way, everyone. And uh, I appreciate that. Okay. So if you have any questions, by the way, throw them up in the comments. I'll answer them. All right. So I'm not seeing anything yet. So people like the negative space. That's great. I'm happy about that. I aim to please sometimes. Um, uh, Judas ha uh, Judy has a question. Your base should always be opaque. Uh, not necessarily. Um, your base could be kind of whatever you want. Normally, uh, if you're using a lot of white, it's going to be pretty opaque. Because um, I wanted a light base. And the way to get a, a pretty light colored base is using white. So just but you know, because there's a lot of white in there, it's usually opaque. Uh, but if it's transparent, um, that'd be fine too, or semi transparent is fine. Um, because there's a white, you know, there's white gesso on your canvas or panel. So what's going to show through is white when it dries. So it's, um, uh, it would look good no matter what, um, uh, usually. So, but, uh, you could, I mean, if you wanted to go black, you know, black is pretty opaque. But I normally like to use uh, lighter colors or darker colors um, for my base coat. Sometimes I've done, you know, middle value colors. Those can really look good too. So it all depends on what you're going after. But um, I'd say I'd say either way, you really can't mess it up too much. The only thing you don't want to do is have like a 
black, you know, black gesso or black canvas and put like a trans, a really light transparent color on that, like yellow or something. Cause when that dries, the black's going to show through. So you don't want to do that. And, uh, Donna thinks the, uh, the white shape is a bit weird. We'll take a look at that. Um, cool. Let's take a look. Donna, Donna doesn't like the white shape. I don't know how to say it, but this white shape is a bit weird. Um, well, let's take a look. Let's go back over here. So I'm not sure what, if she's talking about a white shape or one of the negative space shapes or this white shape. I'm not sure. But um, there's a lot of interesting shapes in them. And there are no weird shapes, by the way. There's only unique shapes. So <laughs> no worries. All right. So... Cool. I'm not seeing any other uh, questions at this time, but um, let me know. This is a pretty quick demo. And uh, negative shape. Yeah, someone like... Um, you're saying negative shape is a weird shape. I don't know. I'm losing. I'm losing you guys. <laughs> so, uh, Lulu, uh, Lulu did a, a purple painting a little while ago. That's awesome. Uh, blue, gold, white, and purple. That sounds very cool. Cool. Well, Novala likes the shape. Thank you, Novala. Um, yeah, I like the shapes too. Now there can be, not that, um, every shape is going to work with every composition. So, you know, some shapes don't fit. Um, I don't, I wouldn't say there are any bad shapes, just, uh, bad shapes for the particular painting or composition. Um, I'll point out some things about shapes though here, because we're talking about shapes. Um, and these are kind of principles of design. So these apply to pretty much any kind of artwork, uh, regardless of the style or medium. It can it applies to sculpture. It applies to two dimensional art. Pretty much everything. Like principles desi of design apply to uh, many things. So, but a few of them that I like to follow um, are straights and curves. I like to have straights and curves, uh, uh, you know, a nice a blend of the two in all of my paintings. So over here on this side, we've got some very interesting sh straight lines. Uh, and they're not perfectly straight. It's not like, you know, razor straight lines, but look like this gentle curve right here. And then we've got this nice straight that's kind of contrasting to it. We've got straights down here that are accented by this really nice curve right in here. And uh, we've got these beautiful curves around here. And then we've got some kind of straight, um, these kind of concentric straight lines right there. You know, I couldn't plan that, you know, that just kind of happens. But I like when that stuff happens, um, because it just lends to a better overall design. And sometimes you can plan for stuff like that. It's in paint pouring, it's very difficult. Um, but if you're if you're really into design and stuff, um, you could let this dry. You could add some, some very, um, add some straight lines. You could add some things after the fact, if you want to really take it to another level. But so that's one is a nice blend of, of straights and curves. And I think we've got some nice straights and curves in here. Um, and then an asymmetrical composition. So by that, I mean, I don't want anything like right down the center and right across the center here. Um, you know, breaking up the canvas in like equal squares. I want everything shifted um, 
and asymmetrical. So we've got this great big, you know, positive space shape right in here. And then we've got these like kind of narrow, smaller shapes in here. And, you know, we've got this really nice long negative space shape and this kind of triangular one over here. And then kind of this very interesting funky one in the middle. And that's nice too, because three, you know, three shapes is always better than four shapes. Odds are always better than evens um, with this kind of stuff in principles of design. You always want to have an odd number of things. Uh, like these little peaks here, we've got three of those, which is cool. Uh, in nature, things happen more in odd numbers than even numbers, uh, usually. So it just lends itself to a better uh, overall design. So, so those are a couple little things. Um, I also really like the values. We've got lights down in here, and then we've got darks kind of running through there. We've got some mid values, and I'd say this, you know, the negative space is more of a mid value than a, a really light, light value. So we've got a nice blend of values. Um, I think the colors all work nicely together. Um, we've also got, talking about colors, you can talk about um, uh, color temperature. So we have warms and we've got cools. So whites are kind of a cool color. The blues are kind of cool. And then we've got the warms uh, in the, the base coat is warm. We've got this warm brown, the dark color is very warm and the warm uh, gold. So, and then there, so there's more warm than cool in this one, in my opinion. And that's good because you don't want equal amounts of anything. So you always want uh, one to dominate. So in this painting uh, in particular, the warms are more dominant th than the cools, in my opinion, I think. So um, these are all little things to think about, principles of design. Uh, we'll talk about this more in our membership. Um, but you know you can't control all this stuff, but it's good to know about because you know when you when you're looking at it and assessing your painting, you can kind of think about that stuff. So uh, even though we have limited control, um, just knowing about it will help you will help kind of guide you to making a more interesting composition. So all right. And uh, okay, so that's enough of me talking about stuff. So let's see here. And uh, Novala's making jokes. I love them, Novala. That's funny. Uh, <laughs> about my no bad shapes. There are no bad shapes. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Okay, so final call for any questions. Um, otherwise, I might talk more. So, <laughs> but, all right. Well, I don't see any. But anyway, well, this is a fun one. Um, and uh, kind of a short, shortish demo, but that's okay. Sometimes short and sweet is better. This is, this is kind of short and then long-winded, perhaps. But uh, anyway, thanks for joining me. Um, Okay, so anyway, well, I hope you have a great uh, weekend. I hope this inspires you to at least give this a try, maybe. I think you might enjoy this technique, the uh, flip and drag with negative space. Uh, give it a shot. Um, you can decide on a cool negative space color. You can, you know, use less paint because we're, you know, we're, you know, dragging that cup around. Don't forget to poke a hole in your cup. Um, and uh, give it a shot. And if you get a cool one, or even a bad one, just share it with us in the, the Facebook group. That would be awesome. So I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, I like this one. And uh, I will see you again very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.